All right, here we go, Ellen Law 2. That was a good starting point, though. I feel like this will be the next part, but we'll see. We shall see. All right, everyone have their snacks all set up? Okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'm Reed. Here we go. <laughs> Previously on LNL, the party decided to search the Library of Ages for information that would aid them in their fight against the cult of Braxis and their disarmingly handsome leader, Keth. Oh, I'm getting flushed just hearing his name. You all came across the Eternal Nautilus. Oh boy, Naughty. And after some trial and error, you were able to gain entry to the Library of Ages. Oof, don't remind me. Inside, you battled a magical book. Jeff found the Necronomicon. And with the help of Dewey, you uncovered the locations of the Blightbane Axe and the temple in the Ocean of Sand. That was so fun. I love it when we work together on things, Trish. She's... Oh, I thought those were tears. Not to mention, I finally got the recipe for Torlax's chewy chocolates. Back on the ship, though, you ran into Kef and were able to best him. But he managed to escape in fantastic fashion before you could land the killing blow. Not before turning him into a frog. We have a choice to make, my friends. You can go down the ocean of sand to seek the temple of and Brax's true name, or you can brave the misty mangroves for the blight bane axe. Hmm. Big decision, both options sound equally unpleasant. Take a moment to think it over. Remind us of the unspeakable horrors you mentioned in the group chat, Celeste. The ocean of sand is incredibly vast. You risk losing both your way and your mind. But the misty mangroves aren't any better, not with those monsters driven mad from the blight. Well, of the two incredibly dangerous options, I'm leaning temple because of the ocean of the sand is ancient homeland of my people. Also, I think learning the true name of Braxis would be very powerful. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling too. I'm getting real Jeff levels up vibe from the temple. And people prefer to hide loot and sand, uh, in the sand over swamp trees. It's just physics. But let's not forget that Blightbane is only the only loot we really know is going to help in our fight. Yeah, I'm feeling... Uh, the swamp trees. Uh, I have a note from the last session that says sexy swamp bust, I think. So we should take a hint from my past self. My notes from my last, and just, last session just say, make sure to get the, and then it stops. And a page full of the, world, of the word gold. This is also why I read off of Linnea's notes. And that's why I color coded them. Oh no, it says sexy swamp beasts, and that makes a lot more sense. I mean, swamp bus makes sense too. We all know how vine mages love to commune with nature, Maya. <laughs> Didn't they invent skinny dipping in this world? Okay, let's shoot. Temple, true name, it'll be Cakewalk. Just think of what the blight bane, the blight bane, right guys? You've been quiet, Faye. What say you to all this? Uh. Let's go to the swamp. Yes. Say there are young creatures there, infants. <laughs> Wait. Can we kill them? My god, Reed, we gotta. Just follow your heart, Lenya. The let your ancestors guide you. You begin to see mangroves as you approach the swamp from above. Huge roots reaching down into the water. A deep, choking mist forming near the canopy. At first, it's just a few trees. 
standing alone amidst the brackish water. But as you continue, the trees get larger, blocking out the sun, and the swamp air gets thicker, warmer, and wet. Ooh. So basically the locker room after pee. Exactly. Your visibility starts to get worse as the mist thickens. You can barely see the huge web of roots that lies beneath. In the distance, you catch a glimpse of one huge mangrove rising far above these still giant trees. As you strain your eyes to see, suddenly the airship lurches to the side. The vagrant is snagged in the branches. It's too dangerous. You're going to have to jump before the ship capsizes. Do airships capsize? I can't risk it. Jump. What do we do? Do we jump? I jump. I'm jumping. Okay, I jump too. Jumping. Uh, I jump. Cast reaching vines as we fall. Okay, you can only target three creatures. Vines spring from your hands and surround Jeff, you, and Linnea. Then reach out and wrap around the branches of the mangrove, slowing your descent. Ollie and Faye, you both tumble off the ship, hitting numerous branches before landing on top of one of the giant mangrove roots. You both take... six damage. Okay, that's not too bad. Nice landing, 10 out of 10. Hang on, I think the... I think I will get the Vagrant unstuck. You all go in search of the axe. I'll meet up with you afterwards. Goodbye. See you later, Vagrant. Okay, so Reed, where are we? Right. You've all landed together now, and as the patch of mist clears away, you realize you have landed smack dab in the middle of a group of mushroom people. Ah, oh, mushroom people. Ah, oh, the mushroom folk are the worst. Their pale, fleshy faces turn to stare at you. They screech and raise the weapons they were honing before you interrupted them. Roll for initiative. Okay, let's roll. Nineteen. Not bad. Got a twenty. These mushrooms are pretty slow, so they're gonna go last. They actually really don't like that. A bunch of them run and flee, and a few melt into puddles of spores. Wow. Okay, you next, Faye. I'll cast an area of effect spell too. Dark flames erupt in a floor with a 20 foot circle around the targets. Five fire damage. You burn the rest of the mushroom people into charred little stumps. Barbecue. Nice, I didn't even have to get involved. Couldn't stand to hurt any plants, huh, Maya? What? Mushroom? Mushrooms aren't plants, they're fungi. Oh, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. After you defeat the mushrooms, you begin to feel a sense of dread. Can we roll the bodies? Do these mushrooms have any loot? Mm, it's very strange. Their bodies sink in the mud, and you can't find anything. Oh man, now I'm definitely feeling a sense of dread. Okay, what do we want? Head to the giant tree? Is that our goal? I mean, wouldn't he wouldn't just put one giant tree in the middle if he didn't want us to go there, right? Our characters don't know that. <laughs> do I have a sense of which direction it is? Yes. As a vine mage, you feel an acute sense of dread coming from one direction in particular. Guys, I'm beginning to feel an acute sense of dread coming from one direction in particular. You begin moving through the swamp in that direction. It's difficult 
The water reaches up to your thighs. Small gnats begin swarming around you, biting at your faces, crawling near your nose holes. That's descriptive. Oh, yuck. Each footstep becomes more and more difficult as the mud under the water sucks on your feet. Can I just imagine the mud is Kev? Yes. Actually, you can. You start thinking of Kef. You clearly picture his face lit by candlelight. I knew he was romantic. And as you're looking deep in his eyes, glittering in the firelight, you get the sense that something is very, very wrong. Oh shit, what's going on? Maya, you turn around, and you see the forest you grew up in as a little girl, and the flicker isn't a candle. It's a line of orange that fills the entire horizon. That's when you smell smoke. Oh no. Flames rush through the underbrush. It's so fast. So remarkably fast. You can barely hear the screams of your family over the roar. And you know intuitively that no water, no fine magic, nothing will save the forest. It is lost. It's gone. Do the rest of us see this? You do not see this, Linnea. You see a wall. A wall? Yes. On this wall, there's a pattern. It's so intricate. Lines swirling and collapsing in on themselves. It's so intricate that your eyes have a hard time focusing on it. And yet, the pattern just makes sense to you. You're right on the verge of cracking it. You walk closer, and the pattern begins to converge. And you feel yourself falling. Words lose meaning. You forget how to speak. There's just these lines everywhere. If you can just figure it out, you forget who you are. You forget time. You only see this pattern. This is awful. Jeff. Oh no. Jeff, you feel great. I do? I mean, great. I do. You're surrounded by gold. Everywhere you look. Gold, gems, trinkets. You're on a huge mountain of gold. Sweet. Can I swim in the gold? You sure can. You play in this vast sea of wealth. But then, things get boring. You've already tried sliding, swimming, building gold stacks. All of it. The thing is, the more you walk around, the more gold you see. But you never see another person. Not another living thing. You're utterly alone. I have all the books and all the time in the world. <laughs> you know what I'm referencing. Uh, I love you. Oh no, please don't try and make the, me learn a lesson from this. Ollie, you see Braxis. I punch him. You punch him. He smiles at you. You try to attack him again and again. And he is completely unfazed. Then, with one flick of his finger, you are vaulted aside. You know you've lost. You know that evil will return to the land. And the thing is, life isn't so different under Braxis. You return home, and the day to day is very similar to your life before you went adventuring. Except for one thing. Every day, every time you step out of your tiny home into the bright sun, you see something in the faces of everyone around you. You hear the whispers behind your back. You see the masked smiles. All hiding disappointment. I, uh, wow. Sorry to everyone, I guess. Faye. Faye, you see yourself. Myself? Yes, you are watching yourself. You see yourself return home. You see yourself interact with people you used to care about. You see yourself do things that you used to enjoy doing. But you, you feel nothing. You are a ghost, watching Faye talk. Watching Faye move, watching Faye sleep. 
But keep staring at your Fey face for some piece of recognition of what it is you should feel or do or are, but it's always just out of reach. Can I talk to anyone? You've long stopped trying to scream at the people Faye talks to. But tonight, you try screaming at Faye. To try and understand what has happened. To understand who Faye is. To try and feel... something. But Faye never hears. Never reveals anything. Faye just... is. Faye. That hurts. As these terrible visions fill you all with overwhelming doom, you suddenly realize you're all waist deep in the mud and you're sinking fast. Shoot, um, let me look through my spells. I got it. Clasping tendril in the direct line to wrap around a tree trunk before extending it over to us. You're a lifesaver. Quick, everyone, use the vine as a rope. Pull yourself towards the edge of the mud. You don't need to tell me twice. After escaping, you finally approach the blight tree. The sounds of the swamp, crickets, frogs, the wind even, have all stopped. This close, you can't even tilt your head back enough to see the top thick. Dark sap erupts from the pock marks all over the surface of the tree. Oh hey, it's sophomore year again. Yuck. Yeah, but your scales are flawless now. Don't even think about it. You begin to feel once again this over the sense of overwhelming. I rush the tree. Okay, you rush the tree. There's no way I'm letting this stupid tree get the better of me again. I'm the plant mama, me. You scream, I'm the plant mama, as you race forward, brandishing your staff as you near the roots of the epic mangrove. What are the rest of you doing? I'm waiting and seeing. Getting a little closer, I guess. I just want to smite the thing. Let's go. As you connect with the root, it feels fleshy. Your staff embeds inside one of the oozing pockmarks. And then, with a yank, you are pulled inside. Maya. Oh no, huh? <gasps> what? Tell me, tell me, tell me! Is something happening to your character? I'll never tell. Ooh, secrets! I love secrets. Shh, no one has any secrets. Agreed. No secrets. Anyways, you all have something else to worry about. I'm going to need all of you to prepare for battle. All right, let's see what we do. Eleven. I got eleven. Banea, you're first. Then Faye, then Jeff. Come in, Maya. I rush forward and put my hands on the tree, casting Banishment. Roll for effectiveness. 15. Normally pretty good, but against this guy, it doesn't do anything. It whips out at you with a root, sending you flying back. I use one of my throwing spoons and hurl at it, it at the tree. How good is your aim? Eagle Eye. Oh, well, in that case, it sails through the air and embeds itself in the tree's trunk, where black ooze starts dripping out. Made it bleed. You guys have done a good bit of damage so far. It's the tree's turn now, and instead of attacking you, it plunges some of its free roots down into the muck. You hear a gross sucking sound, and the wounds you've given the tree start to regenerate. Jeff, your spoon pops out of the tree with its bark healed over. Faye, the cuts you've managed to inflict also seal back up. I like how it says spoon, but fork is in the, in the thing. Ah, that's funny. That's 25 damage it healed itself for. I don't understand. Why isn't it working? There has to be a way to do this. It, is a mangrove resistant to everything? I don't remember seeing anything in the creature compendium about this. Uh, I want to do something. You 
can try. What spell do you want to cast? Um, Psychic Glimbasting. It says here I can tap into the mind and taunt any sentient creatures I choose within a 60 meter radius. Are the mangrove sentient? Oh, they sure are. Faye, you reach out, sliding into the collective consciousness of the swamp. What do you say? Make it good. Oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe I should this be a group discussion? Hey, tree idiots, your mother has a, has sappy pockmarked bark. And your roots are so gnarled, they make me want to yarf. Normally I wouldn't stand for the slander, but it's appropriate. These trees suck. I hate them. And they should feel bad. Wow. Brutal. Crushing. All the trees at once shudder as if flinching. They're stunned for a moment. Oh gosh, I should try to break free. As you begin to emerge, you feel the mangrove sucking you back. You get the sense that you don't have much time. I attack the spot where Maya is poking out. Okay, that's a three, a seven, an eight, and a one. Um, uh... Oh, hurry! I'm doing my best. It's 18. Actually, it's 19. A 23 if you factor in the bonus. And that's a high enough roll. Ollie, you weaken the tree enough for Maya to break free. Good. I'm back, baby. Time to kick some trunk. Maya, suddenly you feel great. Any lingering dread is gone, and you're ready to mess this nasty tree up. Rush back. Uh, I rush back to my feet, take a few steps back. Turn this horrible, horrible abomination of a plant. Maya, you feel a deep emerald power coursing through your viney veins. Where the tree was trying to suck you in before, it reels and shrinks away from your newfound glorious energy. How do you want to finish this? Take my staff, wind up, and gathering all my energy from the flower mother, smash it into the ground. Do you ground. say anything? Ooh, help me, what do I say? Ooh, badass. Something about flower power. Suck my flower power. As you smash your staff into the swamp, nothing happens. Then, after a moment, a streak of blinding light bursts from the water all around you. The water instantly evaporates. And as the circle of light shoots upward, you see the tree pus and decay get blasted off, leaving healthy bark beneath. The mist has been burned away, and as the sun shines down for the first time, you see in the grotto of the tree, Blightbane, the Axe of Legend. I'm going to gently reach into that grotto and ease that out, the eased out that axe. Oh my. You pull it out. Cool axe, Maya. Thanks. It's awesome. It feels very god killy. Or wait, does it read? It totally feels god killy. But you get the feeling it isn't meant for you. Oh, all right. Here, Faye, you can have this. Oh, thanks. Nice axe, Faye. Yes, we did it. I think that was the hardest combat we've had. We almost lost you, Maya. What were you thinking running there by yourself? You could have been killed. Leave me, leave the rushing to me. Hey, the most important thing is we made it. I didn't die and... The rest of you notice that the beam of sunlight reflects off of Maya's hair in new and exciting ways. I cast time slow and flip my hair. It looks incredible. It's like a shampoo commercial. There's like a soft glow everywhere. It's fantastic. A shadow passes over you all. You look up to see the silhouette of the vagrant. As a rope ladder gets unfurled, you hear Sid call down from above. Hey, you guys didn't die. Let's get out of this dump. All right. 
You all return to the ship and tell Celeste what happened. Does she notice my hair? Maya, I love the hair. You're glowing. Thank you for all your hard work. I know how dangerous that must have been. Maya almost got swallowed by a tree. Maya, it took me a second to read. We almost managed to avoid the true danger of the misty mangroves being lost in your fears forever. Do you think you might have, I don't know, led with that? Yeah, that was super creepy. See, I'm starting to doubt your credentials, Celeste. Yeah, we specifically asked you about that, Celeste. What the fuck, Celeste? <laughs> yeah, Celeste, I'm going into my room. I literally don't know how it could have been more clear. You all retire to your quarters and turn in. But Faye, you spend some time struggling to fall asleep. And when you finally do, you're suddenly awoken by a light in your eyes. What's going on? You open them. Does someone have a torch? No, it's coming from outside. You open the door to the deck and step out. What's happening? You hear it before you see it. A slow whine. A whisper coming from this light in the sky. You hear something coming. A whisper tickling at the base of your spine. A single word. What is it? Cataclysm. Something zips onto the deck beside you. It's a small piece of hail, sizzling. Then zip, zip, zip. More start coming down around you. Then come the screams. The burning hail rains down, tearing through the ship. Everyone is panicking, running. It's chaos. You see Sid and Celeste turn and run full speed off the deck, holding hands as they fall. The light winks out for an eternity. Everything is quiet. Then on the horizon, you see the sunrise. Rays of crimson light crawl across the sky. The whole sky is a dazzling red. It's so peaceful. But your gut knows better. This isn't sunlight. Sunlight doesn't smell like ash. The sky is on fire. You hear the roar now. And your world explodes in pain. The sound is deafening. It's so hot. So inescapably hot. Why won't it just end? And you wake up. In your bed, on the ship. You glance over at the mirror, but you don't see Faye. You see a shadow. A shadow with a burning red smile that whispers, Hello, Faye. Miss me. What the fuck, Reed? <laughs> Just trying to play a game. <laughs> and that is where we will end tonight's session. Wow, that was a very strong ending. Reed, I did not like that at all. I'm assuming that's just a dream, but... Um, that was... Oof. Reed, dude, what the heck was that last bit? Yeah, that vision you gave Faye was... ominous. Things are reaching their conclusion. Time's almost up. Hey, Trish, can we talk? I'd be like, we are talking sure, now. Sure, <laughs> but it's kind of late, though. Gotta go feed Mango. Wow, you're such a bitch. Sage, walk me home, my cook with the left hook. We'll talk later. Battle of the Bands is gonna be epic. See ya!
Oh, she does not look happy. She did not look like she was enjoying that. Good evening. Our top story tonight, the latest on the asteroid scientists are predicting will make a close pass to the planet. Good Officials continue to say there is little danger posed by this once-in-a-generation astrological event, with most projections showing the space rock missing impact by a margin of 20 to 30 percent. But one local amateur astronomer is raising alarm with new self-published trajectories that show a much higher chance of impact from this massive object. Why the f <laughs> Why did it crash? No. Want to report it? Ah, uh, just accept and report it. I think this is a good place to play, uh, place to stop. Anyways, we're reaching the hour mark in our gameplay. But I kind of wanted to tell a little story while we're talking about end of the world stuff because I was like, kind of reminded me of when I was in high school, and like. 2012 was the big thing because that was like my junior year going into my senior year and I remember that people were freaking out because <laughs> they were literally thinking it was like the end of the world and uh, they would literally I remember uh, when that day was because I was at home on Christmas vacation and I remember I was listening to the, uh, <laughs> I was listening to the radio and they were saying that NASA was getting phone calls from, this is like from ordinary people about, is the world going to end? Is there an asteroid coming to us? <laughs> but to kind of preface it, preface it, I guess there was a lot of like, uh, like shows and stuff being like, oh, the end of the world. There was even the 2012 movie. So it was like kind of like the big thing of the time. So I'm not surprised that people actually believe the world was going to end. I'm kind of upset, though, that our game had to crash. But I think it was a perfect stopping point anyways, because we got to play the LNL. And I think I'll split that into two parts. I'll do the first part and then the LNL second. But yeah, so far it's pretty good. Um... I enjoy it. Uh, I really enjoyed the trans talk that was in there in the beginning. Um, I think that is very important, you know, in bringing out a sort of awareness about how uh, trans people feel. I'm not trans myself, but I always support my trans 
friends and family. I don't believe I have any trans family members, but if I did, I would support them. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give that where I kind of said goodbye to Volcano High until, <laughs> until the next time. Uh, I kind of do want to try and finish this game tomorrow. So I might power through it tomorrow, if not today, for sure. But I, I had a blast playing it. I always have a blast playing this playing this game. Um, and I can't wait to see what, it, what game they come up with next after this one. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm still... Listening to it. Um... I think I kind of aged myself by saying <laughs> that I was in high school when two, when 2012 was the big thing. Um, and then the other thing was uh, I did play. I, I've got another upload of Stray coming up. And then I do want to play some more of that. I do want to finish that game as well. Um, I'm trying to wrap up these two. Because I know in October, Assassin's Creed come out, and uh, I do want to play. I do kind of want to focus more on that game. It's not going to be like the previous three, but I am still excited to play it. So um, I know there's a lot of other games. I know the new Spider-Man is supposed to come out too, so I'm going to be missing out on that. Because I don't have a PS5. But I believe once I do get a PC, I do want to play these other games that I don't ha don't have access to right now. So my channel's at a lull, but that's only because I'm not playing anything great. I think the next one, like I said, it will be... Um, Assassin's Creed. Um, but I do want to thank you guys for watching if you stuck around <laughs> for the after stuff. And uh, yeah. I will see you guys next time. You guys have a good day, a good day, night, whatever. Um, do comment down below if you do want to leave a remark. Be loving. Don't be hateful. I know I'm not that great, but <laughs> please don't hate on me. But uh, I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you next time.